Hello and welcome to McLaren Port Huron's Today's Health. I'm your host, Barb Winters. Our subject today is one that's frightening to most of us and that is heart attack. So joining to us to give us important information is board certified interventional cardiologist, Dr. Elias Scaff. Dr. Scaff, welcome back to Today's Health. Thank you, Barb, it's good to be here. Well, let's jump right in. What is a heart attack? Um, heart attack is an abrupt and sudden decrease in the blood flow to the muscle of the heart. That means, Barb, that the heart muscle is not getting enough blood flow, means there is not getting, the heart muscle is not getting oxygen and it's dying. That's exactly what heart attack is. And what causes that? It's a good question. Um, heart attack is um, caused by blockages in one of the uh, arteries of the heart. We call them the coronary arteries. The heart has three major arteries. And um, what caused that exactly is a cholesterol plaque built inside the coronary artery, causing decrease in the blood flow to the heart. Um, I want to just point here. Um, this is the coronary artery. This is the artery goes to the front of the heart. We call that left anterior descending artery. If we go to the next slide, we can show what the normal artery looks like from inside and what the diseased artery looks like where we can see a plaque of cholesterol built inside the artery. This plaque at certain point will um, block the artery 100% causing major decrease in the blood flow and uh, heart attack. And how common are heart attacks? Heart attack is very common, Barb. Um, heart attack is, or coronary artery disease, is the leading cause of death in the United States as well as in Europe. And that, of course, stands true for the state of Michigan and also for St. Clair community. Well, who's at risk then for heart attack? Okay. Um, certain people and certain patients are at risk for heart attack. And I want to go over the risk factors. They include uh, patients with diabetes, uh, patients with high blood pressure, um, high cholesterol. Of course, we have to keep in our mind that family history is very important, genetics. So uh, patients with family history of coronary artery disease or premature coronary artery disease are prone to have heart attack at younger age. Um, of course, um, sedentary lifestyle patients, they are prone to have heart attack as well. And that, what I mean by that, uh, any kind of physical inactivity. And uh, beside that, um, um, uh, that's pretty much people who are at risk for, for heart attack, actually. What can you do then to prevent a heart attack? Um, what we can do to prevent heart attack, we have to do what we call risk factors modifications, meaning we have to take care of the risk, putting us uh, or brought us to have the heart attack. So we have to control the diabetes. We have to lower the blood pressure. Uh, people uh, who have sedentary lifestyle, we have to encourage them to walk and exercise and that prevent heart attack. Uh, control the cholesterol, either with medications or with diet. And so basically we have to modify uh, the risk uh, uh, factors uh, for heart attack. Of course, I have to add one important thing, which is smoking is a major risk factor for heart attack as well. So we have to talk to the patients to quit smoking and help them in quitting smoking as well. So it's important to see your doctor and know your numbers in terms of your blood pressure and your cholesterol, because those are things you can work on. Absolutely. There are certain things we can modify and we can adjust. And you just mentioned diabetes, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, smoking. These are things really we can control with medications or with diet. Now, there is certain things we really cannot control. Family history, we cannot control. So we have to work on the risk factors we can control and the major are the smoking, uh, uh, diabetes, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, and also sedentary lifestyle or physical inactivity. What are the symptoms then of heart attack? Let's spend some time on that. The most important symptom of heart attack, Barb, is chest discomfort or chest pain. Um, uh, of course, there is uh, other associated symptoms could be presented, and that include cold sweat, very unique symptom, shortness of breath, nausea, vomiting, dizziness, lightheadedness, and sometimes loss of consciousness or what we call it syncope. Uh, the chest discomfort sometimes can be presented as left arm discomfort, right arm discomfort, sometimes pain between the shoulders or pain in the neck or in the jaw 
this is all uh, this is all also indicators of a heart attack as well so we don't have to wait until the patient has chest discomfort the discomfort could be presented in both arms could be in the shoulders could be in the back could be in the neck could be in the jaw as well I want to point to one important thing in women and in elderly people um, chest discomfort could not be there and sometimes they present only with shortness of breath so we have to keep that in the back of our mind that these these group of patients they present with shortness of breath as a symptoms of heart attack okay. so just to point that which is very important because sometimes we can miss it we're missing we, ha we have no chest pain but that doesn't mean anything in this group of patients if you think you're having a heart attack what should you do then the first step is um, is to call 911 by calling 911 Barb the EMS will be arriving they will be, they will assess the patient and the treatment process will be started at that time and uh, it will be started by doing what we call a 12 leads EKG and this is very very important part of assessing and taking care of the patient if the EKG determine that the patient is having an evolving heart attack then the patient will be transferred by EMS to the hospital or to the nearest emergency room and then uh, will be taken care of now import, very important point the patient should not drive himself to the hospital or let anybody else to drive him to the hospital the patient should be taken to the hospital by ambulance for multiple reasons one of it is the patients with heart attack or evolving heart attack they could have what we call cardiac arrest on the way to the hospital and the EMS they know how to deal with that mm -hmm. um, other important thing is for the patients to take aspirin once they feel there is something going on and like sit and wait for ambulance to arrive so three important things call 911 take aspirin and sit not do anything till AMS arrive where they can assess the patient and take care of the patient great information we're going to take a break and then we'll come back and talk about what happens when you get to the hospital sounds good <laughs> 